Back on Sports Talk here in Beauxjour, here's a look at some of the teams you'll be hearing from throughout the show that are participating in the Scotties. Team Brown, Skip Joel and third Alicia make a return visit to the Scotties in their third season playing together. Team Anderson, also third season playing together, and it's been their most successful yet, currently ranked number 11 in the world. Team McKay, first year team, but all members have been longtime junior provincial competitors. They're coached by world and four-time Canadian champion Kathy Goche. How could they not have a bright future? Team McDonald, second year playing together and have eight provincial titles between them. Team Overton Clopham, they've only been playing together for six months, but look at the experience Kathy O brings, eight-time Manitoba champion, five-time Canadian champion, as well as a 2008 world champion. Team Reed, first year curling together, and although this is Cheryl Reed's fourth provincial appearance, it's her first time as Skip. Couple more for you, Team Spencer, it's a family affair. Manitoba Scotties provincial champ, Barb Spencer, along with her daughters, Katie and Holly Spencer, Sydney Arnold, a part of the team as well. And last but certainly not least, Team Zacharias, first season together, first appearance at the Manitoba Scotties, youngest team in the field. Welcome back to Sports Talk here on Shaw TV. I'm your host, Mike Valente. We are in the town of Beauxjour today for the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. I'm standing outside of Vicky's Snack Bar. It's a town staple. There's just over 3,000 people that live in the town. I would make a guess that most people have made a stop at some point into Vicky's Snack Bar. I'm going to get a bite to eat. While I do that, check out our next curling feature. Growing up, were there specific curlers that you looked up to as role models? Uh, I did. Uh, Sandra Schmerler. Okay. She was one of my favorites. Uh, Greg McCauley, he's my uncle, and he won the Briar in 2000. Growing up, I guess when I was very young, I always looked up to Colleen Jones because she was the one winning all the Canadian championships at the time. And then um, on the men's side, I always looked up to Stoughton and Martin. Now it's, it's really great to kind of be in a competition where we potentially get to play against some of those teams at the, at the Scotties. I uh, grew up watching Connie Laliberti and then got an opportunity to play against her. And of course Jennifer Jones, like she was, when I played her in 04 here, we actually played her in the, in the playoff game. And she just had such a, such a wonderful demeanor on the ice and so skilled. Honestly, I would have to say Kathy O. <laughs> That's totally cool. Definitely was one of the ones where, you know, they, her and Jennifer always did really well. So I always watched them kind of going further and further each year. Definitely Jennifer Jones team. I look up to Jennifer Jones, definitely, and Eve Muirhead, because she's so young and playing at such a high competitive level. I started my junior career playing against like Jen Jones and Kelly Scott, for example, like she was Kelly McKenzie back then, and she was a world junior champion, and I had to get past them, you know, so that sort of was the early introduction. And... How would you describe the evolution of the sport? Are there noticeable changes that you can identify nowadays versus when you first started playing? Training's huge in the sport now. Um, back in the day, it wasn't really that much, uh, even though they use those corn brooms, <laughs> they're pretty tough. But uh, nowadays, everyone's in great shape, and you have to be to uh, play at this level. I've curled for about 30 years now, so um, when we first started out, it was you know not as much focus on physical activity and maybe nutrition as there is today. And now the girls are getting stronger and they're working out more and they're taking nutrition more seriously. Sweeping is a lot of work. People might not consider it watching it on TV, but it definitely is. Uh, so physical fitness is huge in um, being competitive. It's not just sitting and having a beer, it's going out and working out. I think that the women's have really stepped up with the fitness level, the strength training. Um, I think it's a must in our sport today to be able to uh, compete against everyone else and to be able to manage those three game days for sure. How much training and exercise is involved in your weekly routine? Starting in the summer, uh, we started going to a uh, personal trainer 
Uh, usually once or twice a week. I think it's really improved like all of our fitness. We worked with a personal trainer this year to try and strengthen our legs, strengthen our arms, and the girls, you know, for their sweeping to get stronger as well. Everyone is kind of responsible for their own fitness. I know one works with a personal trainer, um, one does a lot on her own, and uh, I myself, I do a lot of lifting toddlers. And <laughs> well, I can speak to my girls, my sweepers, because they are very fit young ladies. Uh, mine is is a little bit more of the mental prep, I guess because that's more the part of my game. I do yoga quite a bit and the girls do the gym, so it's just a age difference, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Is it, like, how, how, how did you decide on yoga specifically? Um, a lot of the breathing and the stretching and, and just the relaxation part of the yoga, you really bring a lot of that into the game and I find that's very helpful. Standing here with Greg Iwasco, you have been the ice maker for eight years for Curl Manitoba. Thank you very much for joining us, Greg. We're at the Sun Grove Centre for the Scotties Tournament of Hearts here in Beausjour. Tell us what the process is like preparing for such a big tournament like this. Well, the first thing that we do, we uh, come in on Friday afternoon and uh, we shoot levels while they're setting up the bleachers and the media bench. And uh, so we make sure that the ice is perfectly level before we start. Uh, then a heavy hose flood, wide open hose flood is uh, put on roughly about 1,500 gallons to level it right out. And then we paint the white colors, the rings, advertising, more flooding. Uh, it's roughly about a, I'd probably say about 60 hour adventure. Temperature is obviously a big thing too, inside the building and on the ice. Talk to us about that a little. Uh, yes, uh, the other night it was pretty cold, so um, we had to actually boost up the heat in here to make it around uh, 60 degrees at four feet. That's kind of the optimum temperature to have for arena ice. So that's our mini little Zamboni. Yeah. Uh, other than we don't have augers or a bin to throw it in, we have uh, six other volunteers to pick up the snow, which is pretty, probably pretty nice. Um, what it does is it scrapes off the pebble to bring it back to flat ice. Okay. And then we re-pebble with fresh water and everything. So how did you end up getting into this then? Um, I actually curled in Selkirk, Manitoba, mm -hmm. and uh, just was throwing lots of rocks. And the yeah. ice maker there just came out one day and if you're here, you might as well have a job, so took it. <laughs> and, and curling clubs across the country, you can go take courses for this, right? If they're preparing for big, yeah. big tournaments yeah, or not? Yeah, like, um, like I'm the lead instructor for uh, level one, two, and three uh, Curling Canada courses. So yeah, everybody can take a course. We offer one probably every spring or fall. What would you say is the most satisfying part of your job? Showing up somewhere after I've taught a course and the guys are doing it exactly how I taught them. Yeah, that's a big piece of pride for you right yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. We appreciate your time, Greg. Thanks Thank very much. This town is just amazing curling center and uh, 250 volunteers to run this. And so it's been fantastic, yeah.